I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and joining me to answer this question is Michael Martinez with Schneider Electric, a supplier of industrial, commercial, and residential automation technologies. So thanks for joining me today, Michael. Thanks. Good to be with you, David. You know, uh, one thing there, Michael, I wanted to touch on, you mentioned uh, decoupling hardware and software and this concept of decoupling, you know, we've seen coming up again and again uh, recently over the past few years, probably most notably with MQTT and how it decouples uh, applications uh, to get data from devices, how it decouples the application from the devices so it doesn't negatively impact the performance of those devices. Can you explain this decoupling of hardware and software as it applies to universal automation that you're referencing? Absolutely. So there's really kind of two ideas behind decoupling here. And, and one is the, the, the idea of virtualization. So we're, we're familiar with virtual machines and virtual hosts. You know, being able to decouple the operating system and the applications that run on those app, app, operating systems from the actual hardware itself. So in many instances, you know, if you've been operating on proprietary control systems, you'll know that the operating systems, the applications are, are tightly coupled to the version of hardware that you're running. And so in many instances, based on the life cycle of the hardware itself and or the life cycle of the operating system, you may be compelled to change hardware or software for no other reason than life cycle, right? So this is why it's been a challenge in, in, in the recent study that we found in terms of digital transformation to invest in these technologies because you're really simply replacing one product with another product for no additional return. So this becomes very difficult. And so the idea of virtualizing a, a workstation or server, putting that on a piece of hardware so that that operating system and applications can be managed separately, independent of the hardware is one now, obviously that comes with its own challenges and risk associated with supporting of the operating system and cybersecurity uh, concerns, but it does allow you to extend the life of those applications and not be compelled to upgrade or, or modernize your system until you identify what that return uh, that you expect to get from the from the application update is. Secondly, I would say it's the idea of containerization. So today we we couple our controllers and the embedded software that runs on those controllers in a way that that as similarly to the workstations and, and PCs, that as these controllers age or as you want to add new features, you have to change out your hardware. And in many instances, do firmware updates and such. The idea of containerizing allows us to take all of the benefits of the controller and put them into a software package that now that can be hosted on different types of hardware. And so that idea of, uh, of, of having a containerized controller now allows you to think about not only uh, being able to separate from the lifecycle requirements of hardware, but now new architectures. So the idea of being able to host a controller uh, in, a, in a data center type of architecture or even closer to the edge, or even in an intelligent instrument or, de or device. So this gives us whole new ways of thinking about architecture and actually allows us to start to think about scalable, scalable availability, performance, and availability in a whole, whole new way, uh, I think, that's going to bring a, a new, new way of thinking to automation. 